The views and opinions expressed on the following program may not necessarily reflect the views of the staff, management, or board of Hope Media Group and KSPJ. It's what's happening around us, in our town, suburb, city, in our community. It's Community Beat with Kim Cossie mckee on 89.3 KSBJ. Well, hello and welcome to Community Beat, where we're keeping you tuned in to the topics that are impacting our local communities and helping them thrive. I'm your host, Kim Cossie mckee Senior Director of Community Relations for KSBJ. And today we're focusing on the subject, Think Pink as we speak with a representative from the American Cancer Society, where their mission is to improve the lives of people with cancer and their families through advocacy, research, and patient support to ensure everyone has an opportunity to prevent, detect, treat, and survive cancer. Very happy to welcome my guest today, Ms. Ashley Dedman, who's the director of the National Breast Cancer Roundtable with the American Cancer Society. Well, good morning, Ashley. Good morning, Kim. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Want to say welcome to you and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Kim, for the opportunity. It's a joy to be here. My family and I listen to KSBJ, and so it's just an honor. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Absolutely. So, Ashley, tell us what makes this month so special. You look around in many circles and you see lots of pink. Um, even sometimes some of the sports teams have pink on their cleats or little ribbons and all of that. What is it about this month of October that we need to uh, be aware of? Since 1989, breast cancer mortality or breast ca- the breast cancer death rate has dropped 43% mm. because of early detection, uh, improved treatments, and more awareness thanks to the popularity around Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Breast cancer is most treatable when caught early. That's why October really marks the this time to bring about more awareness. Um, The American Cancer Society is encouraging um, average risk women to begin regular screening mammograms at the age of 45 with the option to begin screening as early as 40. Um, Although the American Cancer Society has been leading the charge to end cancer through advocacy, research and patient support, as you just shared, the greatest tool a a woman has to protect themselves and their loved ones is regular screening. Every year as we come upon the month of October, it really amplifies the importance of early detection and screening. Uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month is, is not just a month. It's it's something that's year round. Mm. Um, but Breast Cancer Awareness Month is really when it's amplified. This is our mission year round at the American Cancer Society. That's wonderful. So we are talking today with Ashley Detman about this month being Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so we'll be sharing lots of information to um, just help guide you um, along the way. So you mentioned. Ashley, in your comments about factors like family history, genetics and lifestyle choices, tell us more about your your own personal journey as it relates to family history and personal genetics. My Mm. great grandmother, my grandmother and my mother all were diagnosed with breast cancer and all are on my mother's side. Mm. My father is a prostate cancer survivor. When my mother was diagnosed, I was 18 years old. I was a senior in high school Mm. and I was getting ready to go off to college when she was diagnosed. It was interesting because we found out we were on vacation and my mother, we were going into our hotel room. And I don't know if you remember the hotels kind of back in the day had those metal plates on the floor as you go into your your room and Mm -hmm. that plate was loose and she tripped. Wow. And so... And a couple of days later, she was having some back pain. Okay. And so we took her to the emergency room and that emergency room visit resulted in a stage four or metastatic breast cancer diagnosis. Amazing. Wow. And, you know, but when I think back on it, my mom put herself and everyone else ahead of her own health. Okay. 
her her annual mammograms and ske- scheduled well woman exams all got rescheduled okay. because life got in the way. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, this resulted in her not going for her annual screenings. Okay. Over the course of those four years, my mother um, and father, um, they traveled across the United States looking for second opinions. And, and ultimately, she passed away four years later. Wow. Um, and shortly after, my father called me. I was getting ready to graduate, and he had shared with me that he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Wow. And Kim, it was at, a tough season. It was very tough with it all within a couple of months. And you were in college at the time. I was in college now wow. at this time, getting ready to graduate. And I remember asking myself, what is going on in my family? Mm-hmm. And course. just asking and really looking at um, the multiple cases of breast cancer. And now my father with a prostate cancer diagnosis and I was 21 getting ready to graduate, Mm. you know, beginning my career and I was scared. Of course. And so I did the only thing that I knew I could do. And that was, you know, I I come from a family of educators and Mm -hmm. so education was always key. Okay. So I had to educate myself and I did that by reaching out to my OBGYN and updating her on my family history. Okay. And she always told me, if your family history changes, call me. Let me know. Don't wait till you come back in for your annual visit. Or if you find out more information about your family history, call me. Let mm, me know. Don't wait advice. to come back in. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I did, Kim. I, uh, I called her. I updated her on my family history. And that's when she told me to come in. And we began to have conversations around a genetic counseling and genetic testing. Okay. And so at the age of 21, getting ready to turn 22, I had just lost my mom. I had just um, found out my father was diagnosed with, with prostate cancer. So I went from being a caregiver and helping to support my father, support my mother, and now supporting him through his journey and also having questions about my own. And so I went through genetic testing. I was now 22 at the time, and I found out that I carry the BRCA2 gene mutation, which mm. makes me at a higher risk okay. than the average woman. The average woman is about is at about 12 to 13 percent risk over her lifetime. Okay, and a person, or from what my doctor told me, having a BRCA mutation, um, I, I'm at a higher risk, up to about an 87 percent risk of breast wow. cancer okay um as well as higher risk for ovarian cancer and elevated risk for other cancers and so having this information and knowledge really helped me to identify my next course of action to protect my breast and ovarian health mm-hmm. and um Beginning at the age of 22, I had my baseline or my first mammogram, Mm -hmm. and I had them every six months in combination with breast MRIs and breast ultrasounds to aggressively monitor my breast and ovarian health. I also had Mm -hmm. um, transvaginal ultrasounds to Mm -hmm. monitor my ovarian health. And Kim, I did this for about a decade. and. I felt empowered because I knew Mm. that I was not only getting the screenings that I needed, but I was being able to work with my doctors to be able to uh, make informed health decisions about my health. That's great. And so I felt empowered. It's important because women who are at high risk for breast cancer based on certain factors should get breast MRIs and mammograms every year. Mm -hmm. And that's a conversation that each woman should have with her doctor um, based on her risk. And so I felt empowered by my decision. I knew my standard of care looked different. Mm -hmm. After about 10 years, I and having children, I had a preventative double mastectomy to reduce my risk of breast cancer. That was a personal decision that my husband and I made. It was important that I took the time to make that decision. Mm -hmm. Um, He and I had had several conversations. We prayed over it, had that in December of 2016. And so um, today my standard of care looks different. I see my high-risk oncologist annually for clinical exams to continue to monitor my breast. 
I also still receive transvaginal ultrasounds to monitor my ovarian health. I heard you mention a term in our earlier conversation, previver. And that is um, a very interesting term. I'd never heard that term before, but obviously it speaks to the preventive measures you went through or you're going through just to uh, give yourself um, the best possible chance of maintaining good health. And and there's something to be said about doing some being so uh, proactive like that. Um, let me ask you, Ashley, what you mentioned, um, you and your husband and prayer. And um, of course, KSBJ is a faith based radio station. How was your faith impacted during that season, even when you were in college? You know, have how important has faith been in your journey, even still to this day, because I know there are many people who are going through various health scares and health situations while being people of faith, even in spite of knowing Christ, if you will. So just in your own personal experience, how significant has your faith been? In my own personal experience, I would have to say early on when I lost my mother, mm-hmm. To breast cancer. I was 18 when she was diagnosed and I was early 20s when um, she passed away. It was really my faith was like almost like a yo-yo. It was kind of up and down. Of course. I remember as a caregiver when I was taking care of my mom and helping my father take care of her. There were a lot of hard moments. There were moments where um, I was at home with her on the weekends and we'd be in the bed watching TV and they were really good moments. And there were moments where my my mother would push me away. Okay. It was really trying to navigate and understand that I couldn't take it personal. Sure. She was personally impacted by this mm-hmm. disease and that my father and I were impacted by it in a different way. That's right. And as a caregiver and, and with my faith, my parents always raised me to know we honor our father and mother. And even through this time, this was an opportunity to honor her and mm. to serve her as she had done with her entire family and her children. It was hard. Of course. We had our good days. We had our bad days. My father was played a key role in helping me understand the journey that she was going through and that I couldn't take it personal. Mm-hmm. And there were times when we would laugh together, when we would cry together. But one thing that never wavered with my mother was her faith. Okay, that's beautiful. And it was her faith in God. And no matter what this disease did to her mentally, physically, emotionally, socially, financially, Mm -hmm. my mother's faith remained solid from what I saw. Wow, that's amazing. Now that I'm a wife and a mom, I, I probably know she, of course, had her ups and downs, her own walk and journey. I think that for me really helped me to know Um, how solid our faith in God is. Mm -hmm. Uh, We know that all things work together for those who love the Lord. And even when we don't understand why or how they're working, Mm -hmm. we know that they will work together. Mm -hmm. And that's really what helped me to stay grounded. When my mother passed away, I went through another season in my life where I was angry with God. Mm -hmm. I was mad. I was upset. I was hurt. Sure. Because my father was now diagnosed again, so I'm grieving. I'm now helping to support my father through his journey. I'm graduating from college. So many different things going on. I'm now concerned about my own risk right, for my health. Yes, you were dealing with a lot. I was dealing with a lot. And so I had to really allow myself to understand that being a believer in Christ, he understands that we're going to go through these seasons. Mm -hmm. He understands that we're going to have these different feelings of grief. Mm -hmm. And I just had to really allow myself to go through that season. And I really believe it helped me to walk into my purpose of being passionate about helping other people, other families Mm. um, impacted by this disease. I ultimately believe it's what brought me to the mission of ACS. And 
even now, having gone through my own journey with risk management and with my own uh, double mastectomy and now being a mom of two girls who have a 50 50 percent chance of having inherited my mutation, it is truly my faith that keeps me going, Mm. knowing that my mother would not want what she went through to be in vain. Yes. Um, to be able to go out and take what we've learned as a family to help other families, to be of hope to other families, mm. to extend compassion to other families, um, to support other families because we've been through it ourselves. While I don't know why this happened, why my sure. mother was diagnosed, why she passed away, I do know it was a part of God's plan mm-hmm. and and because of my love and my faith in him, I continue just to walk by faith mm. and, and know that there's families out there who are, who are being impacted by this disease every single day. That's right. They all have their way of getting and navigating through their journey. My faith in God is what has helped me and still helping me. And I'm just grateful. Okay. So, Ashley, if you will, let's talk a little bit about how breast cancer affects African-American women differently. What are some of those disparities that exist? Black women are 40% more likely to die from breast cancer. Black women, typically you will see in black women late stage diagnoses, Mm -hmm. as well as diagnosed with more aggressive forms of breast cancer, for example, triple negative breast cancer. Many of these disparities are rooted in structural racism, which contribute to inequities in what we call social determinants of health, including access to care. At the American Cancer Society, our vision is to end cancer as we know it for everyone. And we are addressing these disparities um, several ways. I know first and foremost is through our research. We are conducting and supporting health disparities in health equity research. We have the Voices of Black Women study. It's a study to better understand cancer and other health conditions among black women. Or another way we are uh, addressing disparities is through the program or the roundtable, the National Breast Cancer Roundtable, um, which I have the opportunity to lead. Mm. The National Breast Cancer Roundtable was established in October of 2022, so almost a year ago. President Biden relaunched the Cancer Moonshot Initiative in February of uh, 2022. Okay. And the American Cancer Society answered the call to be the home of two new roundtables, cervical and breast cancer. And through the National Breast Cancer Roundtable, we're not only addressing disparities in in communities of color and black women, but also disparities in rural communities and other under supported communities. Mm. And so... I'm honored to be in this role because I have the opportunity to work with the American Cancer Society and our member organizations to address health disparities in black women and other undersupported communities and really to to continue to move our mission forward, which is to improve the lives of people with cancer and their families through advocacy, through research and through patient support to ensure everyone has an opportunity to prevent, detect, treat, and survive cancer. So the bottom line, it sounds like breast cancer screenings are key in all of those situations. Um, In just having that opportunity for early detection. And so um, the encouragement to all of us is to get our screenings. (laughs) This month, you also have a campaign that the men are heading up. Talk a little bit about that. Right now, during the month of October, we have our Men Wear Pink campaign going on. Mm. We have 40 prominent men in the Houston community raising funds for breast cancer. Our campaign is currently ranked fifth in the nation, Mm. so we're very excited, Kim. It's awesome. If you'd like to support, visit menwearpink.org backslash Houston, Texas. 
will end on your Grab Your Girls campaign. Tell us a little bit about that. So with the Grab Your Girls and Get Screen, we are wanting women to grab your friends, grab Mm -hmm. your sisters, your mothers, your aunts, and make sure that you all get your mammograms by scheduling a group screening day. Whether you're in the same town or clear across country, pick a date and call and schedule your screening because breast cancer is easier to treat successfully when it's found early. And so as I shared, just as we get together for nails and brunch and trips, get together and schedule your mammograms. Go together, make a day of it. And when you're done, you can go get your nails done or go shopping afterwards. Mm -hmm. But we really want to make this something that we do together because when we're when we're together, there's that accountability. Mm -hmm. We're there to support each other through the process. We're there to help each other through the process. We're there to be be with each other through the process. And so I'm super excited about uh, the Grab Your Girls campaign. I know even with my daughters, they're not old enough to get screened. Mm -hmm. um, But this is an opportunity for me to continue the conversation with them Mm -hmm. um, about the importance of screening and early detection. It's important for me because when I'm on the phone with my my friends and um, just people that I uh, I love and that are dear to me, it helps me to um, even go with them Mm -hmm. to their appointments and their screenings and whether that's driving them or that's going with them or just calling just to make sure that they went. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about the grab your girls campaign and get screened um, because I really believe that's how we continue to protect our health and show love for one another. Mm. Well, Ashley, you've shared so much wonderful information with us today um, to raise awareness about the importance of screening and letting us know about the wonderful initiatives. So tell us where can people go to learn more about the things you've shared or they may want to volunteer in some way. Um, Where should uh, people go to learn more? To learn more, you can go to cancer.org. Or if you are in need of support and resources, you can call our hotline at 1-800-227-2345. Awesome. So that's cancer.org or 1-800-227-2345. Well, Ashley, it has been quite the delight speaking with you today. So I'd like to say again, thank you so much. This has been Ashley Detman, who has uh, been joining us. Ashley serves as the director of the National Breast Cancer Roundtable with the American Cancer Society. So God bless you, Ashley. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate you and thank you for the opportunity. And don't forget to grab your girls and get screened. And as always, thank you to our wonderful audience for joining us today. Please join us again next week for another edition of Community Beat. I'm Kim Kasi McKee on 89.3 KSBJ. Thanks for joining us for Community Beat with Kim Kasi McKee. Join us every Saturday morning at 530 on 89.3 KSBJ.